that are just logging in, my name is Debbie and I'm at the Math Science Nucleus. And as you're logging in, we've got everybody muted because we are gonna have several classes, but at the end of class, we will unmute for questions. All right, so as you're coming in, well guys, make sure that you can see me waving at you. I'm in probably a little corner of your screen. And the big screen, you should see the 2026 and a kind of a star. And you should see kindergarten. Yay, kindergartners. Today, we're going to be studying carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores. Those are all the different kinds of food that animals eat. We can tell what they eat by their teeth. So today's lesson is going to be all about teeth. So are we about ready to get started, Dr. Joyce? Yeah, or should we wait for a few more? We've got everybody logged in? No, it's 8.30 start. Okay. They're on. All right, everybody. We will go ahead and get started then if everybody you think is logged in. And as others come in, they are welcome. They're gonna just come in on in the class. Waiting room is disabled. So again, good morning, everybody. Again, we are from the Math Science Nucleus. And for those of you that have parents watching and for our teachers, this is, you'll see our phone numbers and our website. If you have more questions, you can always ask us, send us an email, ask us some more questions um, that you can't answer. <laughs> and then you can also go to this website if you want to see some of our storybooks again. Um, and we've got lots, you can do a tour of the museum, lots of information on that website. So that's that msnucleus.org. All right, so today, again, my name is Debbie and welcome to our virtual field trip. I'm so glad all you guys could make it. Good morning, everybody. All right, today we're gonna be studying carnivores, herbivores and omnivores, all about animal teeth. Can you give me a thumbs up if you see the grass in the background and the giraffe and the cheetah running? Can you give me a thumbs up if you see that? Okay, all right, I know we're, we're all connected then, we're all good. All right, yes, today we're gonna to be studying a lot about teeth. And for those of you that were came early, I know some of you were finishing your breakfast. So think about your teeth and what you were eating for breakfast. So if you think about your teeth, you can use your tongue to feel around in your mouth. And it's kind of funny, because your tongue makes everything magnified. Even if it's just the tiniest little corn kernel stuck in your gum, it'll make it feel like it's giant. But if you feel around with your tongue in your mouth, you may wonder what is a tooth? So in this picture, you see the tooth is made of something called enamel. Can you guys say enamel? Enamel is even harder than bone. So it's a good thing that always gets fossilized because it's so hard. And it's actually, these teeth are attached to your jaw, to the bone. So they're actually down in your jaw under here. Like you guys have your adult teeth hiding out down here in your jaw. And it has lots of nerves and blood vessels. Now I've got a model of a tooth right here for you to be able to see. And if this model of a tooth just looks like my picture, so this part above my hand is the part of the tooth that you could feel like in the back of your mouth. See how it's got almost like a square on top? And then everything below my hand would be covered up by your pink gum, okay? And then when you look inside your tooth, it's pretty cool. Inside your tooth, you see these different layers. So the enamel is just a thin layer on the outside. That enamel is so strong, it protects your tooth against all the bacteria and things that can hurt it. Underneath, there's a layer called dentin, and then you have the pulp. And again, everything is covered underneath then by your pink gums. And all the way down here, these roots of your tooth are connected with nerves and blood vessels. So has anybody here lost a tooth? If you lose a tooth, it doesn't really hurt, but it does bleed. <laughs> and that's why, because you have blood vessels going up to your tooth. Now, one thing about your teeth, 
is you want to take good care of them because you only have two sets of teeth. But you see in the middle of this tooth right up here, you see that little black mark? Oh, that's where some bacteria has gotten in. Some tooth decay has happened. We call that a cavity. And once the cavity gets started, that opening, see how it goes down? And now it's getting into that dentin. Oh, now you're gonna have a toothache. And so if you drink something really cold or you bite down on that tooth, then that's gonna hurt. So you need to tell your mom or dad, you need to go to the dentist. That's a person that takes care of teeth. All right, so you've got your teeth. Again, you can feel around in your mouth, but again, all you're feeling is that top part, the crown of the tooth. Now, looking at your teeth, this is an activity for you to do later on today. There's a worksheet. And if you don't have the worksheet, um, teachers, it is online where you registered. And the worksheet is just simply about kind of like this drawing. So you've got, it'll be something like this. And so kids, it just, it's just for you to color. Notice that there's a key at the bottom. And I started mine with a key at the bottom and then you color those at the top. All right, so if you look at this picture that's on the screen, you have four different types of teeth. You have your upper jaw and your lower jaw. Now for you guys, if you use your tongue and you feel these first four teeth you have in the front, well, some of you might be missing some teeth. You have, those are called incisors. Those are for cutting, kind of like a knife. And then you've got the pink ones are canines. They're a little sharper. And then you've got premolars and molars, which are flat, which are squishers. They're grinders. They're for smushing your food. For those of you who are just eating breakfast, think about how you were using, which teeth were you using to eat your food? So again, this is a worksheet, a worksheet that you can download. Kids, if you don't have it yet, your teachers will get it to you. And this is an experiment for you guys to look in a mirror. Best thing is to go to a mirror or have a little handheld mirror and look at your teeth, look closely. And then go and look at your parents' teeth. They have more. Look how many more teeth your parents have. And then as you're looking at your friends, you may notice that some of them are missing different teeth too. So we expect our different teeth to come in at different times. So again, everybody is different. See my teeth? Okay. Now, everybody's teeth are unique. Everybody's different. They lose them at different times. Sometimes you even have what we call shark teeth, where you have teeth coming up behind your baby teeth. So sometimes, again, teeth come in all different ways. All right. So today we're going to be studying most of the animals from the animalia, the larger reptile or the larger um, animals that have the chordata, that have the vertebrae. And what I'm talking about a vertebrae, see my big skeleton back here? Vertebrae are this, is this backbone. Can you feel your backbone behind you? You might be able to feel it behind at your neck. Can you feel that? All right. And as we were waiting for kids to get on, we had reptiles like my lizard here. We had some fish. Those all have backbones. I don't think I have a bird here. I do have a crocodile, but you guess what that one is? And then I have a wolf over here. I even have a giraffe. So we're going to be talking today about these larger animals. Here's a fish. Now, why do I know this is a fish? Remember, fish always have tails that go this way. If it's a mammal, its tail goes up and down. 
Okay, so even though both of these animals live in the water, the shark is a fish, the dolphin is the mammal, but they both have teeth. So let's get exploring. We're going to look closer at these teeth. All right, now these teeth, they're pretty special. They tell us all about how an animal eats, what they eat. Even animals that lived long, long ago, we know what they ate by the shape of their teeth. So if you look at these skulls, look at the top one. Can you see the blue teeth? Those are your incisors, the ones in the front. So that one has some incisors and then it has the big long teeth, the carnivores. And then look at the brown teeth in the back. Use your tongue. Those are those flat molars that you feel in the back of your mouth. Can you feel those? All right. So a carnivore has these big sharp teeth. Those are really big on a carnivore. So that's a meat eater. They need to be able to pull flesh and cut flesh apart. They eat meat. All right. Look at the herbivore on the bottom. Now this is something like a cow. Look how it has the blue incisors. It only has teeth on the bottom. Only on the bottom. It doesn't have any incisors on the top. Can you put your lip over your incisors on the top and just show me your bottom? Can you do that? <laughs> so an herbivore has these bottom teeth to be able to cut the grass and then look at how many of the flat molars it has to grind. Okay, so an herbivore is cutting and grinding. Now an omnivore, that's you. You have the blue front teeth. You have the side teeth as carnivores, those cuspids, and then you have these big molars. And those molars are a lot like my tooth model. Remember how it's big and flat, kind of looks square on the back. So again, that's good for smooshing. So as humans, we are animals that eat all kinds of different food. So an omnivore eats everything, eats a lot of stuff. The carnivore mainly eats meat. The herbivore mainly eats plants. Omnivore eats everything. Okay, let's keep going. Now, this is again, this is what you're gonna see when you look in the mirror and you wanna fill out that worksheet. Your front teeth again, these right up here, are your incisors. And again, some of you might be missing some of these. That's okay. That's what's supposed to happen at your age. So you have your incisors. Your canines are a little pointy. See my canines are a little pointy? Then you have your flat molars. And you can feel those with your tongue. You can feel all around. So you have the same number of teeth on the top as you do on the bottom. Now in this picture, you'll see the tongue is laid down. Now let's see what happens with this little kid. This is what happens when you go to the dentist. You get to lay down in a comfortable chair and they're using, they're looking at all those teeth. So this must be a six-year-old because they haven't really lost any teeth yet. Oh, look, they use a mirror to be able to see the teeth up on the top. Oh, and that little instrument, they're using to see if there's any soft spot. Remember the decay? If there's decay, it'll be kind of a soft spot and that instrument will stick. All right. Hmm. Now this is a cat's claw. Do you think teeth and claws can be confusing? If you found a fossil, then they could possibly be confusing. Um, so that's why we have to look at the structure of how that tooth and the claw is. Okay, again, this enamel, the outside of that tooth is super strong. So that's always going to be, that's like the strongest thing. The 
claw, just like your fingernail, if you look down at your fingernails, your fingernails are made of a protein called keratin. And these are always growing. They do have to be um, trimmed, just like our cat's claw there. Okay, keratin is also what makes a horse's hoof or a cow's hoof, okay? Also your hair, and again, your fingernails, okay? So sometimes we can look at, this information will help us figure out how some animals also went extinct um, by looking at these. So we do have in our museum, if you get here, we, can, we do have the Tyrannosaurus Rex. We have both teeth and claws. So those are really fun to see. All right, now back to these carnivores. Look at that lion. Look at that roar. Can you see those front teeth, those little incisors? Those are kind of silly looking. How many incisors does he have? Take a minute to count. I counted six on the top. Now count the ones on the bottom. These are those little teeth in the front. Six too. But then look at its big canines. Look on the top. See those two big canines that hang down? Oh, but look at the bottom. What has happened to one of those canines? One of them is broken off. So do you think he has a toothache? Yes, he does. Remember inside that tooth, there are nerves and blood that gets exposed. So every time that he touches or eats something, he's gonna get a little bit of pain. But that lion can, if he's living out in the wild, he can't go to the dentist, but you can. So make sure you take care of your teeth. And that can happen sometimes. You can break a tooth if you eat something hard like an almond or bite down on something hard. Um, chewing ice is another thing Dennis warned you about. But if you look at what those lions on the left, they're eating, it looks like a zebra. So you see they have to have those large canines to be able to rip and pull. They don't have knives and forks to be able to chop stuff up. They have to do it all themselves. They use their claws to hold on, but then they use those canines to rip and tear. Now, looking back at this picture to the right, you see the cat's tongue, and then he does still have these other teeth in the back, but they're not exactly true molars, but they would do more of the cutting up, the more squashing of the food as it gets digested. All right, so carnivores, remember, always have those big fangs, those big teeth. Now herbivores, these are the plant eaters and they have teeth that grind. And if you look at this cute little cow on the left, he's having a great meal of grass. Wouldn't you wanna just dive in there and eat that with him? Wouldn't a great meal of grass be great? Well, it's kind of like when we eat salad, we're being an herbivore then. But you see, he's just eating. He's able to rip and tear. Remember, he only has teeth on the bottom, not on the top for those front incisors. And then he just continues to eat. And even this giant hippopotamus on the right, that hippopotamus is a plant eater as well. They come out of the water at night and they will eat about 150 pounds of grasses and seeds to be able to make it through. But you see something odd about this hippopotamus. Look in the very back, its mouth is open. It has those grinding molars and it even has on the top of the roof of its mouth, those little incisors. But then it's got some unusually large canines, those tusks. So some animals have teeth that are a little different. Oh my goodness, look at all the chewing. Can you guys make your mouth do that? That picture on the top is a goat. Can you make your mouth do that? Can your mouth go sideways? Can you feel it chomp in the back? Why do they need to do that? And that's to grind up. Look at what the horse is eating, it's hay. They're eating things that are pretty dry. So they have to be able to chew it and grind it really well. So that's a goat at the top. A goat does have teeth on the top and the bottom, so they can eat a lot of vegetation. Our little cow, 
down there, remember, only has teeth on the bottom. So sometimes if you're driving down Mission Boulevard, you might look up at our green hills. I can actually tell what animals are grazing there because horses take all the grass, a cow just rips off a little bit. So I can actually tell what kind of animals are grazing up there. So this goat eats everything. Look at it chewing sideways. And again, that horse down there eating a whole big mouthful of dry hay. And look at down here, we've got some donkeys. The donkey is trying to eat a carrot. And you see how they're able to move their muzzle up? And as a horse gets older, those teeth grow kind of long ways. Their gums recede and they get real long forward. So you can actually tell how old animals are by their teeth. All right, so now we've got omnivores. We have our monkey there the big canines, you see the small incisors. So this monkey is an omnivore. It eats just about everything. It eats everything. And even our bear, our bear just caught a fish. So most of the time the bear will eat berries and grasses. It's only in the springtime that they will need to eat these fish. Oh, he just caught it again. But he's got to have those canines to be able to hang on. Look at that, that fish is trying to wiggle and get away. He's got to be able to hold on. So these teeth are used for catching their food, breaking up their food, but then also for protection. So again, these animals with these backbones, these are the ones that we are looking at. Fish um, usually do have teeth. Amphibians, like our frogs and our lizards, um, the amphibians, they usually have teeth, but they're more in the back of their throat. The reptiles, some have teeth, some don't. Birds, no teeth. Birds are out of luck. No dentist for the birds. And mammals, like you, of course, you have lots of teeth. All right. So these four mammals are these, the mammals, reptile, amphibian, and fish. These animals with the backbone, the vertebrates, usually do have teeth. Now, remember my crocodile that I had back here? That one had some teeth, definitely. The mammals we've seen that have teeth, but one we haven't talked about is the fish. Even the fish have those little tiny teeth. Some of them have rows of teeth, all different. The one animal that doesn't have teeth are the birds. So we don't call them teeth, they have bills or beaks. And if you look at these pictures, these beaks are more, they're flattened, the bills are more flattened, and the beak is a little bit bigger and has a hook on it. So if you see right inside the line of their mouth, they've got kind of ridges, those are flat ridges, but they're not considered teeth. Now, this is about beaks and bills. We have a um, bald eagle. Look at how curved that beak is, okay? And that's made again for pulling meat. And this funny little bird over here on the right is a shoebill. Now it's a funny bird that lives in Africa and it's got a beak that's kind of like a pelican, kind of like a stork. So there's some animals that are kind of in between. All right, so let's get a closer look at these beaks. So here we're coming up on a golden eagle. This golden eagle, again, you see that sharp Oh, there's our great, our bald eagle. It's got that sharp bill. Oh, here's a red tail hawk. Oh, and here's a golden eagle again, flying around its perch. Look at those sharp talons. It also has its claws to be able to tear apart. But look again, here's the bald eagle. Look at its sharp beak. Here comes the golden eagle. Oh, I sure hope we're not a mouse, something it wants to eat. Wow, so it doesn't even need teeth. It's got a sharp enough beak or bill. All right, so now here we have some animals that have modified teeth. They're a little bit different, okay? Let's look at our hippopotamus. Now our hippopotamus still has those molars in the back and it still has the incisors in the front, but it's got these four canine teeth that are all wonky. So those are a little different. And the wild pigs, these are some warthogs. Look at how these tusks 
have grown out the side. They have tusks on the top and the bottom. If you rub your hands together, what happens? It gets warm. For this warthog, it's making those teeth super sharp. Okay, so they get sharper and sharper. And now the tusk of the elephant. Again, it's a modified tooth. Now this is different. This is made of what we call ivory. And so many animals like this are killed because people want that ivory. They use it um, to, to um, scrimshaw, to, to carve in. Um, piano keys used to be made with the ivory. But the elephant needs them for living. They need them for eating, for moving, and for defense. And remember, just like our model of the tooth that we had, the elephant's tusk, most of the tusk is back inside that animal's jaw. So again, these are some specialized kind of teeth. Now this one, this Norwal is really special. Imagine your front tooth growing straight out for about six feet and it's an inside out tooth. All the nerves are on the outside of the, outside of the tooth and it's actually can bend some. So the Norwal uses this modified tooth to help break through the ice. It also um, helps it find other food, um, but it's again, a different kind of tooth. That's crazy looking, isn't it? So the animal world is pretty amazing and it's full of special, special animals. Now here we're looking at some turtles. Now this is a snapping turtle that's eating some celery. You see how fast and sharp, they don't have teeth either. They have what we call a beak. And if you look to the right, you'll see his mouth is open, no teeth, but that is a beak. And our whales, our baleen whale here has teeth that are kind of more like a paintbrush. The baleen hangs down and look at how this whale is coming up and it's gulping in a whole bunch of water and fish. Let's, let's pretend if you were eating chicken noodle soup and you took a whole bunch of chicken noodle soup in your mouth and then you spit out just the broth and all the chicken noodle part would be stuck in your teeth. That's exactly what the baleen whales do. All that krill, those little tiny things they're trying to eat, get stuck in those baleen. So again, different kind of way of eating. Mm, this animal, this is one we don't usually see. An ant eater. It doesn't have any teeth at all. It has that long skinny mouth and it just has a super long tongue to be able to eat up ants and termites. No teeth at all. All right. So we're going to take a quick minute and look at this working on the food chain. This is one of the storybooks that you can find on our website. And here we go. Working on the Food Chain by Cassie Fries, animated by Doris Rea and Hagos Tavolti. Producers are organisms that make food on their own. It's through photosynthesis that plants can be grown. Plants use the sun's energy to convert minerals in the land. When it comes to feeding animals, producers give a helping hand. Zelda the zebra munches on shrubs and green grass. Zelda is a herbivore. It's a plant eater's class. An animal as a hyena likes plants and meat. A black and white zebra would be such a treat. <laughs> Harry the hyena called an omnivore. He needs to be careful when he hears a lion's roar. Larry the lion, a fierce eating carnivore, has a diet of meat and nothing more. When animals die, their bodies decay. Decomposers and scavengers feed on what lays. As the animal's remains are broken down into pieces, the soil receives nutrients from decomposing feces. The cycle of life is called the food chain, and hunting can be a dangerous game. Animals eat other animals in order to survive. If one animal is extinct, what will keep others alive? If too many animals die, the chains can break and the other animals' lives 
will be at stake. The end. Would you like to hear a joke? Wildebeest or new. The new is a major prey species for many of the large predators, including lions, cheaters, and wild dogs. Guess what? What? No news is bad news. Okay. So again, that is a storybook that you can find on our website if you'd like to go back over it. And just to review a few things. We've got, again, our carnivores that are meat eaters, herbivores that are plant eaters, and omnivores that eat everything. And this picture is just showing you that we have to have a whole lot of plants, right, for those next animals up. So if the sharks don't have enough food to eat, what's going to happen to our food chain and our food web? Everything's going to fall apart. So we have to pay attention to all of those different animals and even the plants that they start with. Now, again, the herbivore is an animal that eats mostly vegetarian diet, mostly plants. They'll eat some meat every now and then, but mostly plants. Our carnivores are animals that eat mostly meat. Now they will eat other berries and grasses and things too, but they will eat mostly meat. And our omnivores, those are foxes or pigs that'll eat anything. And then how about you? Where do you fall in there? You have teeth that make you an omnivore, but you may choose to eat certain kinds of foods as well. So again, this again, pictures that you of your teeth. So when again, when the class is done with today, later on, I want you to do that worksheet, look in the mirror and explore your teeth.